Hi, Vro Workman here, and welcome to Workman Wisdom. Hey, it's Marketing May. All of our sessions this month have all been geared in around marketing. I hope you've got some great tips and ideas on how to increase your marketing strategy. I want to talk today just a little bit about my understanding of marketing and what I believe marketing should look like in your real estate practice. You know, marketing is not an activity. Marketing is bringing a series of activities together to create a predictable result. And when I say predictable, that means that we must track everything that we do so that we know which of our marketing and advertising things are working so that we can duplicate those things that work well. I'm going to go back to marketing and I'm going to say, okay, so how do you decide what your marketing strategy is going to be? I always like to say to begin with the end in mind. So what is it you want? Are, do you want to be more, uh, more have a better brand so you have better brand awareness? Do you want to have a direct result? Will you track your marketing as a result of number of appointments that are set? What is the end you have in mind? And I always like to go back to my business plan and say, okay, in my business plan, we created four pillars of income. If you remember the business plan sessions where we talked about having four pillars of income, each one of those pillars should have marketing behind them in order to be able to execute those pillars. And so we start by saying, okay, what's our goal? That goes back to our business plan. We look at the four pillars of income. The next thing that has to happen, if we want to have consistent income or consistent leads or consistent revenue, we have to have consistent what? Marketing. That means you can't jump in and jump out of marketing strategies if you want to have a consistent lead flow. I'll give you an example. I'll meet an agent and say, okay, I want to do a geographic farm. I'll say, awesome, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to send something every other month. Well, every other month for how long? Well, I'm going to do it for a couple of months, and if it doesn't work, then I'm going to um, stop it. I'm going to tell you right now, that strategy will not work. If you're going to commit to a geographic farm, you need to commit to 18 to 24 months of consistent monthly advertising into that sphere or into that geographic farm. So 18 to 24 months. If you don't have the financial resources to be able to commit to that, you should probably not have geographic farming be one of your marketing pieces or one of the things that go out. Consistency is critical. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna market for for sale by owners and part of your marketing strategy is to call them with a special offer, then you need to do it every single day for so many hours a day until you get a predictable result. So consistency is critical with your marketing. The next thing is, it's, it's really important if you want to have consistency to create what I, I like to call an ad or a marketing calendar. What are the things that need to happen in your marketing strategy on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis? And if you go into Google Calendar, for example, and you create that Google Calendar, every day when you get up, you can block time that says, work on my marketing strategy, where you get in and do your Facebook posting, you do your social media things, you do your geographic farming, you handle your your your. Uh, your four sell by owners and expired, any of the things that are in your four pillars, you have on that, at, on that marketing calendar. That way you know exactly what's going out in advance. And so when it comes time to do it, you don't have to try and figure out what it is you're gonna say or what piece goes out. The next thing with marketing is, and this for me, I've always been, I've never had the financial wherewithal to do brand awareness, meaning I can't put a billboard up and say Doritos and then hope that that made a difference in how, much, how many bags of Doritos I sold this year. I've always been a direct response marketer, meaning that if I spend a dollar in advertising, I want to get a direct response from that, and I want to be able to quantify that response in closed business. My rule of thumb is 6x. So if I spend $1,000 in a marketing campaign, I want $6,000 in in recognizable income as a result of the thousand dollars spent. So my number is 6x. So if I spend 10 grand, I want 60 and, and, and so forth. And so I always look at my return on investment. The only way you know that is if you track everything. In order to have direct response advertising, you have to put yourself in the shoes or the viewpoint of the consumer that you're marketing to and ask yourself this question. As a buyer, as a seller, when I see this ad, what's in it for me? See, if I, if, I, if I make it all about me as an agent, then you as a buyer or seller don't know what's in it for you. We have to do a better job overall as an industry in telling the consumer what's in it for them. You know, I think companies like Zillow and others have done so well because their, their statement to the client is so strong. Get your home's estimate set right to you. I know the benefit to me because I can find out the value of my home. It didn't even matter if it was inaccurate for the first few several years that they did it. The client saw the statement of benefit and they created this phenomenal portal now where the consumer goes. And as a result of that, it now becomes one of our marketing strategies to generate and buy leads from. And so giving that client statement of benefit, making sure that we, they understand what's in it for them is critical in all of your marketing. Make sure you give them what's in it for them. The next thing I think is really important in the what's in it for me piece is the call to action. 
what do you want me to do now? So now I understand what's in it for me. What's my action as a consumer? Do I need to pick up my phone and call you? Do I need to send you a text? Do I need to go and log on to your Facebook page or follow your group? What, do you, what action do you want the consumer to take as a result of seeing the benefit to them? So think about this. What's in it for me? Now what would you like me to do? And then how do we say that in as few words as possible and oftentimes even with a picture? Click here now to learn more. Something as simple as that is, is, is as, as powerful as a long sentence. Next thing is you need to mix up your marketing. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. I believe in having a marketing strategy, not having an advertising channel. For example, Facebook marketing is one thing that's working really well. We're generating listing appointments, we're retargeting clients, we're staying at the front of the mind of people who've inquired about something, and we're kind of following them in social media. But it's not the only thing we do. I want my clients in my geographic farm to see me on social media. But then at once a month, I want them to go to their mailbox and see a postcard for me saying, hey, Verl Workman knows more about the neighborhood than anybody. And here's why that's beneficial to you. You can get free assessment of your home's value without talking to an agent by going to this landing page. And then you can have another thing where uh, when they're at the grocery store, they look at the ad cart and they see the Verl Workman team on the ad cart and the statement of benefit and the call to action. The key is, is that when clients see you, I want them to say, I see you everywhere. And then you can dial in about what the thing was that got them to make that last call or to make the next step or the next action. The key to marketing is mix it up. Use print, use your web strategy, open houses, door knocking, social media, television, radio ads, bull billboards, moving trucks, cars, uh, banners and signs. There's all kinds of things. Co-op marketing with, other, with your partners. There's a bazillion things you can do to have a marketing strategy. The key is identify your four pillars, apply the, the marketing mix pieces that will help you get the greatest return on your four pillars, be consistent with your marketing, have an advertising or marketing calendar so you know what's happening every single day so all of your pieces go out. Make sure that your advertising has a great call to action so you can generate your 6x or your six times return on investment. Make sure you let them know what's in it for them. And last of all, have fun mixing it up. Marketing is fun. It's exciting to get into and it's even more fun when you start seeing the results. The beautiful thing about having a marketing strategy like this is when you track everything coming into your business and you can see what works, all you have to do is turn up the things that are working well and turn off the things that aren't in order to scale your business to the next level. Enjoy this month. Have a great time as you continue to improve your marketing strategy. Thank you.